Good morning, maybe afternoon, Asia. Probably haven't heard my voice in a while. I tweeted something out earlier saying that the Asian preview, the North American wrap, is back online after uh, kind of a long hiatus. Um, some technical difficulties. I had my millennial brother help me sort through some of the technical issues that I was having. Um, so anyhow, we'll be back in, uh, we'll be back online on the weekend, on the, on the Sunday open for you guys, which is, you know, I think a, a really good exercise both for me and you to um, prepare yourself for the week ahead. I think it's, you know, for me, the Sunday afternoon in the North America time is the, the best time for me to actually do a lot of my chart work and my fundamental analysis, um, you know, before the markets are open. Uh, and, you know, you're not chasing trades around, you're completely focused on, uh, on the news flow from the weekend, and the, uh, it's much easier, uh, for me at least, to look at a chart and uh, digest, you know, some of the chart patterns when prices aren't actually moving. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, we do have um, some data out tomorrow, NFP and the Canadian jobs number. Before we do that, I think it's probably best to just, as the currencies are kind of a sideshow these days, um, I have not used TradingView, sorry TradingView, but I haven't, I've been on my other charting application for, uh, for a while, so I need to get back in here. Um, let's just start out with the, uh, I'm only going to do dailies, like I, I'm just, I realize I'm just too old for hourlies. 240 charts still kind of work for me, but my bandwidth has uh, decreased as I approach the ripe old age of 50 and you know 27 years in the market. Um, and the, I'll give you a, a good example, and we'll, we'll pop over to a, a shorter term um, chart in a minute. But here is the s p 500 chart so we all know about this supposed flash crash last night the 800 point plunge in the dow but um, the cme was in basically intervening on the um on the open yesterday um that your asian morning on the open because of things were moving too fast so you know, the stocks had only dropped about 2%, 2.5%. And the circuit breaker, I think, is 7 but during the, um, d uh, on the open, the, and especially after G George H.W. Bush's funeral and the market was closed, I, I have a feeling that the algos were all screwed up. They weren't really sure what to do. Um, I think it, I think it, I think it, it affected their models having that Wednesday uh, no equity market um, and bond market. So <clears throat> anyhow, there was I think 7,000 S&P mini contracts that were sold on the open, which is not a lot, uh, probably pretty normal. Uh, well, not, not necessarily they were all sold, but we're trading and it gapped and then whatever, just, you know, things pop back. but. This is a reason why I'm more interested in the daily chart because you see this long wick, and we'll see this in a bunch of currencies as well. Look where we closed. We closed the upper third of the range, closed just below 2,700. We had opened at uh, you know 2,715 or something, and collapsed. We did not take out. You know, as far as I'm concerned, we're in the 2,600 to 2,800 range until we break. So. I want to put my horizontal here. Um, there's that 2603 low, and we can go up 
to this high here, which, you know, if we really want to go just a touch higher, 28, 25. So this is the range. This is that pattern on the dailies. Uh, my guess is that the plunge, plunge protection team came in today. Uh, we did see some really good volume when we were trading down around 2660, and it never really looked back. So um, you can see here in, in, in your session, we're under a little bit of pressure. But for me, I need a daily close under these lows, 2630-ish, and under here. And if we get under these levels, then we're going to, I think, 2500 in short order, and my target for that whole move is 2400. <clears throat> Um, the NASDAQ chart, oh, let me pull up the futures, actually closed positive on the day. Shocking. I mean, there's no way that this market was not, that there was an intervention today. There's, I mean, you cannot tell me that with all the dovishness or uh, all the bearishness and the negative sentiment in stocks, this was, this bar here. You should circle it because this is an important bar because if you get these long wicks like this you know there's some sort of intervention and that's Trump trying to save face um, while we're on this chart let me go to the cash and let's see if I can do this again I apologize I haven't used this software in a really long time um, let me see if I can even get this hold on comma why Well, just, just trust me on this one. Um, here, if we go to a monthly chart, you're not going to be able to see the doji that I'm trying to tell you about. But we closed last year So call it 2675, just to, just just around it. 2675 in the SPX cash. Um, so this horizontal line here. This is where we closed last year. You can see the monthly chart. So we are, you know, 20 points higher. This is a doji. This could potentially be a doji year. Now, what I was saying on Twitter, and I've highlighted this to some other of my colleagues, most important technical price is the closing price. We get a annual, a yearly doji, which I would not be at all surprised if we get that. Um, that would be a massively bearish candle because we would have made a new all-time high and we closed on change on the year. So I, I can show you this on my Bloomberg charts. For some reason, I can't do this here on trading me because I'm completely useless. But um, that's something that I'll be we're watching. So go to all of your yearly charts of every product that you trade and see where they are. Are we higher? Are we lower on the year? Are there reversal patterns? Are there, are there dojis forming? Are there bearish or bullish engulfings? We only have about three weeks left in the year. So these charts, the yearly chart, I know it's big for someone that's trying to take 20 pips on the market, but the yearly chart, especially, I, I start really focusing on them in usually the beginning of November, and I'm watching it. And so for me, below 2673 in the S&Ps, I'm bearish. Above it, I'm, sh I'm shorter term bullish. Let's pop over to the currencies. Um, we'll we'll go into some more of this. I'll, I'll get my act together and I'll we'll get I'll get you the annual charts um, in you know ten or fifteen products so we can look at them um, and find you know some in, see if we can identify some interesting chart patterns. Um, you know euro. I I just not even gonna not even gonna not even gonna talk about the euro anymore in these videos. I'm just, I'm done with that. Things a clearing mechanism. 
Um, it's not worth really trading, I don't think. We're in a range. <clears throat> here's the Australian dollar, a lot of red candles. Um, again, here's a long wick. This is just the risk on when we had the big bounce. Obviously, the risk off yesterday was the CFO of Huawei that um, was arrested. I guess she was arrested on Saturday during the G20, and it was not made public until yesterday, just before equities reopened in North America. Um, so you could say it, maybe it was a fat finger, maybe it was a reaction to that news. But, um, you know, when she gets extradited back to China, where she'll be a free woman, risk will probably rally. So see the long wick here. 7192 the low, pretty close to this 88 low. Got this other one down here at 7165. Um, looks like it's backing and filling a bit. If we run the Fibonacci's, and I apologize, this is going to be a longer video just because I haven't spoken to you guys in so long. So um, stay, uh, try to stay focused. Half Fib 7208. We could just got through that on the during the day and uh, 7165. This looks like pretty good support here. So we have that old daily low, the big kind of reversal bar. Um, I guess I think as it being Friday, I think we see the low for the week, uh, maybe down here. So that's another 60 pips or so. Um, Dollar yen somehow saved itself. Here's another long wick, and look where it stopped at the 100-day moving average to the tick, which, if we look back, here's one. Here's a breach. We can't close below. Long wick. Here's a breach. Reversal day higher. Here's a breach. Both the 100 and 200-day. Reversal day higher. You want to keep going back? Okay, let's go back. Here's a breach. So clearly, and I'm going I'm to write this down, so bear with me, because I haven't looked at this in a while. Um, the 100-day moving average is key. Fair enough. Um, no strong opinion. The, the, the dollar in, in general is just, uh, it's just being pushed and pulled. You know, the, the, more, the, the best moves have been the stocks and bonds and uh, you know all the equity ind indices have had the, the biggest moves and, and and the currencies are kind of a sideshow although I, I was reading I think it was on Bloomberg um, some quant fund that I've never heard of some ex JP Morgan guys were saying that they think that 2019 is uh, be prepared for uh, a big uptick in currency vol which is music to our ears as, you know, 90% of what we do are currencies. Um, I hope they're right because it's been a, you know, what I, I think it's been a pretty difficult year unless you were long dollar turkey for 25%, which no one was. Um, you know, our group uh, of seasoned veteran currency traders that are now trading more S&P, NASDAQ, crude oil, um, that gas, um, and I would say we're probably about, if we went from 90% currencies to 10% other markets, we're now probably about 60% currencies, 40% um, on the macro side, and, you know, it's just something that we've, we've had to uh, adjust and adapt to the, uh, the low volatility in currencies and, and really just the algos that have um, completely destroyed any sort of price discovery. Um, you know, as shorter term traders, you tend to uh, you, you want to gain information from the price action. Well, that I think that game is over. And, you know, we've been saying that for a few years. Um, so you're not scalping for three to five pips anymore. It's now, you know, more of a swing type trade, and but you know you can't have a strong view um, that really lasts more than a, you know, let's call it four hours. Let's just take a look at the euro. It's such a shit show. I hate this currency. Um, you see here it was selling off pretty aggressively in uh, I think 
this is a London Open here, 2 a.m. my time. Um, you know, sold off your R's, looked pretty heavy, looked like it was probably going to go down, test this 113, 10 level. Nope. What do we do? We go right back up to 114, 13. So, uh, where's my daily chart? This level here now looks like it's a pretty big, um, you know, kind of a big area here. Call it 114, 20, these highs. So above there, we like it higher, but again, it's the euro. It is a, uh, it's not really worth, you can see, I'm sorry, I'm cleaning up these charts because I, again, I haven't been on this uh, trading service in a while. Kiwi daily, you know, eh, not as long a wick as some of the others. Dollar CAD, we're waiting on OPEC tomorrow. We expect that in the uh, probably early New York, some announcement. I think the market's pricing in around a million dollars a day uh, cut, which might disappoint. And um, if I can get to my oil chart in a second, here's another long wick dollar CAD. So you get the picture. And like all of these big risk off trades, there's Aussie yen, which is highly recorded in S&Ps. There's CAD yen. There's a Euro yen wick, there's a sterling yen wick, there's the Kiwi yen wick, there's the Swiss yen, not so much. Um, you know, Euro Swiss, no, not event. Um, one other thing I want to highlight while I'm down here, Euro stocky is in a seasonal pattern. Uh, there's a big pension payout um, flows that go through that's really negative, uh, the switch crone. And that should start anywhere between today and early next week. And then I believe it goes to the 14th or maybe the 18th of December. Um, so keep an eye on that. Uh, you know, if you can find dips to buy, and we've had a, obviously a pretty nice dip, having made, uh, you know, multi-month lows in Eurostocky. We bought some Naki stocky. It's not really working, and we're hoping for a uh, positive outcome of um, at the OPEC Plus tomorrow. Um, speaking of OPEC Plus, here's a WTI. You know, here's another one. Just a pretty decent sell-off down to 50. Are we closing the upper half to third? Obviously, if we get under 49.43, these lows, it's just toast. Um, you're seeing some of this. Uh, MACD cross crossing higher. So this whole move in here is uh, seems to be running out of steam. And, you know, as a kind of a, I like to think of myself as a momentum um, trader. Hold on, see if I can find this thing. Again, I apologize for the Anyhow, so we've had this massive down move, 25%. It's basing. MACDs are turning up. You see what happened when the MACDs turned down. Pretty much called the top in oil. Um, you know, we never really looked back. So this will be interesting. If we can kind of tr keep trading sideways, if there's a positive uh, result in uh, the OPEC Plus meeting, then... Um, we could see this, you know, retracing. People are calling for like $65, $70 a barrel. That would get us up to the 200-day and the 100-day and, you know, good times. Again, um, for uh, anyone that's long oil. Right. Um, what else? NFP tomorrow. Canadian jobs. One thing I tweeted out earlier was as we like to plan our trade before we trade our plan is imagine now Powell was out speaking earlier saying that the job market is very strong the economy is fine you know he sounded pretty upbeat he has seen the number the NFP number so <clears throat> that might have been kind of a kind of a leak of uh, that the data tomorrow is going to be good but what I'm trying to what I'm thinking about and what, what I think the best trade would be is let's you know the NFP numbers expect about one hundred eighty thousand uh, dollars. Sorry, one hundred eighty thousand job growth. Um, 
0.3 for average hourly earnings. What happens if we get, I don't know, a 120 number, which is probably still above the several month moving average, still a strong, healthy number, although jobless claims have been showing signs of a little, uh, little bit of weakness in, in hiring. And um, I think we, they also mentioned that in the beige book yesterday. But let's say we get like a 0.4 or 0.5 uh, average hour of the earnings because we we do think we've been looking for like the, one of these big average hourly earnings uh, numbers to kind of catch up with the rest of inflation there's usually about a six month lag let's say we get a kind of a weaker headline number but a higher average hourly earnings number so now you're talking about inflation wage inflation with lower payrolls growth. What's the trade there? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. You had a massive move in the bond market. Yields have dropped, you know, from 325 in the 10 year to 282 or something today. I could see a big spike in US yields tomorrow. And the way I would play the currencies is I'd be selling Australian dollar against the dollar, I'd be selling Aussie against the yen, I'd be selling Kiwi, and, you know, maybe even Euro. Not touching cable, can't touch CAD, because the CAD jobs numbers are at the same time. Um, and then the yen crosses, and then S&Ps and NASDAQ, I'd be selling both of those. So, that's something to keep in mind. If, if we get, if you see something weaker NFP, Higher average hourly earnings, I think the cleanest trade and the biggest move would be that 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 would um, that would cause the biggest movement, and uh, we'd be looking to play left hand side and Aussie Kiwi and cross yen. So Aussie and Kiwi yen, obviously Aussie and Kiwi yen are highly correlated to the S and P's, and then selling S and P's and Nasdaq, which I don't think are out of the woods yet. Anyhow, I'm exhausted. It's nice to be back online. Hope you enjoyed the video. You'll hear from me next on uh, your your Monday morning. Uh, good luck. Have a great weekend. And if you're trading NFP, which used to be a fun trade, it's no longer. Wish you the best of luck. And we'll speak to you in a couple of days.